Hey guys, what's going on? It's I Touch Stuff here, back with a new and different kind of video. This right here is what I call the Autonomous Shiny Pokemon Finder. Uh, the name almost speaks for itself, but if it wasn't clear enough, this machine will hunt for shiny Pokemon all on its own. I guess you can call it a robot, and in some respects it is, um, but that term I kind of feel overstates what this is actually doing. Before moving on with the video, I'd first like to give the appropriate credit to the YouTuber who inspired the creation of this device that I have here. His name is Deku Nukem. Uh, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, and I believe that Deku was the first to create this sort of thing, although uh, the way we each achieved our end results were much different. What he did uh, was literally solder wires to the 3DS's motherboard in order to simulate button presses. Um, and I myself am not nearly as experienced as he is, um, but I made do with what I what I knew how to do uh, and pursued what I felt I could accomplish and two weeks since I began I now bring you uh, this incredibly exciting machine um, and I hope you guys enjoy so I guess I'll start by walking through the hardware side of things this machine starts with a simple wooden plank base that pretty much supports uh, everything then on both the right and the left hand sides there are two wooden posts um, which both act as supports to hold the pens in place. Each post is drilled into the base from the bottom so as to keep them stable and of course each post also has a mini servo motor attached to the top. These guys are pretty much what perform um, the button presses by rotating in specific directions. Of course we then have the pens which are what the servos are pushing down on uh, and they're held in place via screws that run through the posts and some hot glue. At this point you might be wondering how I'm controlling everything and that's what this guy is for. This is a Makey Makey, a popular Kickstarter from a couple years ago. The Makey Makey was a device that allowed anyone to turn almost anything into a button using only a few alligator clips. I bought this back when the Kickstarter was still up and I never got to using it until I realized that it would be pretty much perfect for this project. All the Makey Makey really is is an Arduino board uh, specifically a slightly modified Arduino Leonardo. And after a quick install of the Arduino IDE, I was able to wipe all of the prepackaged Makey Makey code and start new with a fresh microcontroller um, that I could use however I liked. Continuing with the hardware side of things, the Arduino slash breadboard setup is incredibly simple. First, we just have a jumper wire running from the Arduino's 5 volt pin to the positive labeled rail on the breadboard. Similarly, there is a jumper wire connecting the Arduino's ground to the breadboard's negative labeled rail. With those two rails all set up, each servo is then powered by plugging their positive and negative leads into the breadboard slots along their respective rails. One analog pin is needed in order to read from the photocell or photoresistor, which is used to sense light intensity. Next, one end of the photocell is connected to the 5 volt power via the rail, and the other end is connected to the ground with a 10k pull-down resistor in between. If you're curious, the pull-down resistor is necessary here in order to keep the value read from the photocell from fluctuating without reason. Additionally, the servo motor's remaining two wires go into pinholes on the Arduino that support pulse width modulation, or PWM. Okay guys, I know many of you have been waiting, but it's finally time to see the autonomous shiny Pokemon Finder in action. As you may have noticed, the machine just brought up the Pokemon Party, navigated to, and used Sweet Scent. We can see here now, as soon as the bottom screen goes black, that's when the program stopwatch, so to speak, begins. Um, and then after approximately 12 to 13 seconds, when the bottom screen turns on again, uh, the stopwatch is stopped and the total bottom screen blackout duration is analyzed to see if the Pokemon are shiny. Um, so because there are no shiny Pokemon found with this encounter, the program decides to run away and start the whole chain or cycle all over again. So I think that's almost all there is to say about how it works. One thing to take note of though are the servos and pens. You can see here how the servos rotate in order to push down on the pen tops, which effectively push down on the physical 3DS buttons. Aside from that, if you want, you can stick around to the very end of the video to hear me explain how the Arduino program that I wrote works. But before that, I thought you guys might want to see some of the shinies that this thing has found for me so far. In this first clip, we have a shiny Yanma that was found by the device. According to the log, it took 678 horde encounters to finally find, and had a black screen time of 14,441 milliseconds, or about 14.4 seconds. Next up, there is a shiny Seviper that took a crazy 4,209 horde encounters for the machine to find. To put that in perspective, it took 45 consecutive hours of entering Pokemon battles to find this guy. It's a good thing it wasn't me playing for that long. This next shiny is a Wingle that was found after 1,390 horde battles. It had a blackout duration of 13,935 milliseconds, or about 
13.9 seconds. Lastly, there is the first shiny that was ever found, Nosepass. I don't have an accurate number of battles for him because I was still testing a lot of things. However, I could definitely say that the number was somewhere in the thousand range. Alright guys, so I'm at my computer and I'm going to take you guys through the short little bit of code that I wrote. It's 313 lines according to the Arduino IDE. Um, and this is the Shiny Finder program and you can find this somewhere down below in the description. I'll have it posted online somewhere or I don't know how I'm going to do it. But you'll be able to, to take a look at this and do what you want with it. Um, I'll make it available for you guys. I just thought I could walk you guys through and explain some of the methods that I wrote. Um, so that it could be a little more clear to you if you go ahead and decide to build something like this on your own. Um, so at the top here we just have some pretty um, standard variables that will be needed later on in the program and of course we have to include the servo package um, so we can use the servos um, and I'll just highlight some of the important variables I guess. We have um, some long values here. There's time 1 and time 2 and that is just used to get the millisecond value um, from the photo cell. Uh, and then there's just some booleans uh, that get switched on and off and I'll go through that in a little bit. But of course with every Arduino program um, there's first the setup uh, and I start the serial so that I can debug and open the serial monitor whenever I have to. Um, and the first thing I do is just attach um, the servos to their respective pins uh, and write the default state of 80 to the servos so they won't be touching any of the buttons or anything like that. They'll kind of be in between. And there's just a short delay there. Uh, and there's also a method that I wrote to um, detach the servos. Uh, that's just really basic. It's found somewhere down here. Um, they're just co called serve attach and serve detach um, and it'll just go ahead and attach and detach the the pins that's just used to prevent all the noise that they make because they're kind of crappy servos and uh, they make a lot of idle noise so you just attach and detach them whenever you're not using them so that's just the setup at the very start of the loop I have some if statements uh, that can be used with the serial monitor Pretty much if I type in S, it'll stop whatever's going on. If I type in Go, it'll run the main, the main part of the program. Um, and then I can also control button presses by typing A, X, R, or D. Those stand for A, X, the right button, and the down button. Um, those are all the buttons that I have programmed for the 3DS. And here's where the bulk of the program starts. If the Boolean Go is set to true, It'll start by attaching both of the servos, then it'll start by pressing X to access the Pokemon menu, then press A, and this just pretty much takes it through all the way until you get to your Pokemon party. Um, and just in case that anything goes wrong there and the party actually doesn't show up or, like, say, the X button wasn't pressed properly, um, there's a little loop that runs here, uh, and that's why this party a variable is set to true because it'll go ahead and check the bottom screen to make sure that it went black and then you'll know that you're actually in the Pokemon party. Um, it's very basic stuff right there. And if check party, which we'll go down to over here. So pretty much if it checks out and everything is okay and it's at the party page, um, then we can set uh, we can set go to false and move on to the next stage, which is uh, the bigger check. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second. And that will be right over here. So if check is then set to true, we go to the check screen method. Uh, and this is really what's doing all the work right here. It's a, it's a pretty hefty method, I guess. But first thing we're doing is getting an integer value from the analog read on the photo cell, or the pin that the photo cell is connected to. So that'll give us a value between 0 and 1,023, 24. Uh, I think it's 23. And then just that'll keep looping over and over again and reading the cell value from the photo cell um, until it drops to a value of about 150. So normally when it, the photo cell is just resting on top of the DS, it should have a, an idle value of about 600. Uh, and when the bottom screen goes black, as soon as it drops to 150, it's going to start a timer by using the millis function. That'll read uh, the current millisecond value of the Arduino since it's since it first started. So that'll be set to time one. Uh, and then there's a short delay here because we don't really need to to keep looking uh, at the at the bottom screen. We'll know it'll, it'll be black for at least five seconds. 
uh, and then I have this this method that I call black screen um, and pretty much that's that can be found right here and it just it just loops as long as the the bottom screen stays below that 150 or the value of 150 and so essentially as soon as the bottom screen turns light again or we know that we've entered the battle and the animations are have finished um, that's when it's gonna go ahead uh, and just return the second millisecond value. Um, so time will have progressed since then, so the amount the Arduino has been running for has obviously gone up, and we can subtract the new time from the time that it actually started checking, and then we'll get a, a value of around between 12 and 13 seconds, and that's essentially how long the animation was played for. So that's going to return some value over here, and set that equal to an unsigned long, uh, which I just call black time, or the time that the screen was black for. And then, uh, pretty much, it'll check to see if it's shiny. The parameters that I have it set to right now are, is if the black time, or the screen duration, um, is anywhere between 13.5 and 14.7 seconds, then we'll go ahead and determine that it's shiny. That's just some values, those are just a pair of values that I've tested, um, and uh, of course, the, there might be some area where that value won't work, but I'll have to wait and see. Um, and then, of course, if it's just if it's not a shiny, if it's anything other than those val anywhere between those two values, um, then we go ahead and run away from the battle um, and just set the counter to increase. So the next thing I'm going to explain in this part of code is actually what takes up the majority of the lines, um, pretty much because all the statements are just manual s statements that I've I've had to write out. Um, they can't really be uh, looped or anything like that and pretty much I had this idea instead of using say an annoying buzzer to alert me when a shiny has been found um, I could just have a very simple text message that comes right to my phone um, and since I have my phone always on me uh, it's pretty pretty helpful and I don't even have to be anywhere near the the device itself so that's accomplished by sending email text messages this is just the way that I'm doing it right now and it, it seems to work it it can be slightly annoying but essentially the Arduino can also control computer keyboard presses and mouse movement so when it is a shiny it'll of course be in the mouse and then click on the compose button in this email and start typing the number nine um, which will auto highlight my number I, I just deleted it for now but it'll it'll highlight my number my my phone number at my carrier's um, address and that'll be the the person that it's sending it to otherwise my phone uh, and then in the subject it'll just type shiny with an exclamation point and then tab down to send and hit enter and that message will come right through to my phone um, and that's that's only if it's shiny if it's anything else I'll walk you through that it's gonna press some commands to run away from the battle uh, so that I can restart the whole process over again but on top of that, every 100 battles that it's gone through, it'll send me a text message alerting me the highest uh, millisecond blackout time that it's read so far and the count or, or the number of encounters that it's gone through uh, so far. And that's just achieved by using the modulus function um, where I take the counter, which is the number of encounters that the program has gone through so far, and dividing it by 100 and checking the remainder. And if that remainder is zero, otherwise saying if it's divisible by 100, um, then go ahead and send me a text message and that method is called send 50 message um, because I used to have it send every 50 battles but recently changed that to 100 now that I don't need to test it as much anymore um, and that comes down and does the same thing every 100 battles it'll go and compose a message um, type in my phone number uh, and then go ahead type in the subject the counter so let's just say it's at 1100 uh, encounters it'll type a dash and then it'll go ahead and give me the the highest millisecond value that it's read let's just assume that it's 133 uh, and then I'll go ahead tab down and send that and that'll come right to my phone um, and so I thought that was pretty neat that I, I was able to do that um, just using the Arduino uh, and that's that's pretty much what this program does again a lot of it is just these keyboard statements um, they take up a lot of space and the delays in between just to ensure that that nothing goes wrong I, I really don't want any sort of error it's just to be safe.